now we have end resources. So in a journey, we have all these different end resources. So we have API event. Uh, well, this one, I think I created just yesterday. Somebody was asking in a trailer uh, how they want to, there's a specific question. I think I, I don't want to go there, but yeah, uh, simple. If you want to do an API call and then inject the new customers, new subscribers into the journey, you can have an API event. So through REST API, you can inject the journeys. Uh, you can have audiences like uh, you have this different uh, ad studio and others, right? From there, you can select the audiences. You have cloud pages. Cloud pages will be mostly with the smart capture form. Uh, my favorite is obviously always is a data extension. I basically don't go with other one. If there is certain specific use case, if they necessarily needs, so I'll say why I, I'm saying this. Like, if they necessarily requires other uh, entry source, it is based on the use case. But if I have to have a general use case that we use generally, then I always prefer data extension and the event. Like, oh, I remember I think it was Nidhi who was saying like uh, how to uh, inject a customer and based on the response, add it to another journey. Uh, that happens in the event. One of the features for the event is going to be absolute. It will be no longer there. I'll show you what I'm saying. Google Analytics, like you can inject the subscribers but Google Analytics. But here, what till now, I haven't find it very useful because what happens is you can configure Google Analytics and define a certain configuration, but you only will get the subscriber key. Hmm. So for me, I haven't seen much of a usefulness or use case in my journey till now for marketing cloud, but there might be certain specific use case, uh, which I'm not very sure. Uh, there's an in-app messaging. Uh, I let, let me go very fast. Uh, I will cover this everything in detail maybe later. Then you have this inbound chat. This inbound chat is more related to WhatsApp, not related to other application. Okay. Then you have a mobile app event also. Then you have push notification. Then you have a Salesforce, audience studio and sales for data uh, we'll go that later and most people uh, actually use data extension and sales for data maybe that will be more of a next session where we'll detail uh, we'll discuss more in detail very much in detail so these are and you when you log into your marketing cloud you might not find all these entry sources is because based on its licensing based on how it has been configured uh, then you might find very uh, little entry sources rather than all these entry sources or some might have more entry sources but i'm not aware if i have captured everything but if you find more into this entry source just let me know because but i haven't seen i think most of the things are captured here hmm. then the next one like we have activities so inside activities we have a messaging activity we have an advertising activity we have different flow controls okay and we have customer updates and then we have like when whenever we used to connect with marketing cloud when we use mc connect hmm, uh, to have a handshaking synchronized data extension then we also have this uh, sales and service cloud uh, feature that is added there but for that you have to use the entry source uh, most probably is the uh, Salesforce data, the entry one, which I was saying here before this, it will be the Salesforce data. Uh, we'll go there more into details. Now, in messaging, what happens is a different way how we communicate with the customer that is defined. Like we have email messaging, right? We have in app, we can have an app, and through the app, we can communicate uh, to the person. Uh, that it will be more of a SDK key that uh, happens. Uh, I don't want to go and uh, I don't want to overwhelm anyone going into details. You have inbox, hmm? you have line messaging, you have WhatsApp, push and SMS. And hopefully maybe very soon, I don't know, but there will be Telegram, I guess. Uh, let's see. Uh, but I don't want to be an official spokesperson. I don't know anything, but that's my guess. Hmm? Advertising. Now, when you have different advertising studio, okay, uh, which I'm not, uh, you know, not much of an interest in there, but somewhere they use Facebook uh, for Facebook lead to be captured and show them some kind of advertising. And uh, I'll not go that much into detail for now because I want to, uh, what I'm, my intention is to go first the basics, uh, start with the configuration 
and then go deep into everything i'll go everyone every i'll touch everything into a very big detail and maybe we can create a use case out of it as well now this is the control flow okay it has a lot of flows here uh, design split uh, i'll skip for the instant for now and you have other different splits okay i have even included interaction studio design split uh, part optimizer normally ab is like a ab testing which i am not fond of uh, weight by attribute which i like the most and uh, uh, that wait until chat responses or wait until the app event that is added to accommodate other wait activity based on other channels and push wait uh, push app and the chat event uh, not much fancy about it and einstein scoring is one of the important one einstein sent optimization uh, i like about it because uh, this is the one which I actually try implementing through queries. And I like to learn how this install is actually capturing this send time optimization. Like let's say, Sumit, Nidhi, Lakshmi, uh, Su Kiran, okay? uh, sorry, Surya Kiran, I might call it Kiran, uh, Deepak and other. So what happens is maybe when I'm sending you an invite for this uh, session, you people respond at a different time and you might have your own preferences. Kisi ka bachche hai, kisi koi girlfriend ke saath ghoom raha hai. So likewise. So maybe this Einstein captures every activity, okay, when you are basically opening the email, when you're responding the email. So how that is happening, like it's more like the data views that we do. You know? So it is capturing all the time on the day and everything. So this is one of the interesting part for me. So you have different, uh, we'll go through these different flows as well. And I hopefully this will be the last activity. Uh, so this is the customer update. So here uh, I have captured the Interaction Studio activity to update Interaction Studio data and to update the contact data through this uh, update contact activity. Hopefully this will be the last one. Oh, okay, sales and service. So sales and service, uh, what you can do is, uh, you can update, let's say you have a Salesforce data object and let's say you have an account object. And if you want to update the account field for that particular subscriber, then you can update from here itself. Like uh, what we do in AMP script is you use uh, Salesforce object update or retrieve, right? And we use update Salesforce object function to update to the CRM or the sales cloud. What we can do here, we can use this activity and directly update so in inside the is the same api call okay when you use uh update salesforce object is the same thing here so you have uh, different different here like one is the important one is to convert to lead opportunity to lead and uh, lead contact you can create cases task and other things uh, i think i'm speaking a lot here but hope you people are understanding what i'm saying till now then I'll, now I'm going to go very deep with journey. Are you people able to follow till now what I was saying? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, so, so of the introduction, of introduction, I, okay. I'm, uh, I started that with, for me, that was a boring stuff, what I see till now. Okay. Now in, the interesting st uh, stuff will be starting now. Hmm. Uh, so so journey question I'm having. So in the send time optimization, which you told, uh, so is it be capturing the data views date or how it will be send time optimization? Uh, see, uh, I haven't gone into like how this AI is working. This is more of an AI, you know? So uh, I'm trying to understand how AI is working and I'm trying to implement basically manually. Okay, I'll go there. So to me, uh, this is my blog, right? So uh, inside this blog, uh, if you go in the query, structure query, I think, yeah, like last open date. Hmm. So when it was the last open date, this is one way I'm trying to see what I can capture. And more interestingly, there was another one, likely likely opens when a customer, it, whether the customer opens on Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, which day. Okay, so AI, the way it works, right? So I'm trying to replicate if an AI, how it works. And I'm trying to say, okay, uh, like uh, who, who, who asked this question just now? Surikiran. Yeah, Kiran. 
so let's say i'm looking for kiran right so i can write a query i can have another where clause and i say where the subscriber key equals this or email address is this and i want to see uh, when surya kiran basically opens okay so this likely opens uh, what i did was i'm sending an email getting the weekday okay capturing the weekday and looking into the subscriber maybe i can add the journey or the campaign name and so on so okay but i don't want to die see i don't want to digress to some other topic okay let's go back journey it will be and uh, other people know like if somebody asks a question i go somewhere there the most important thing before when you start a journey okay is your journey setting for me it's always a journey setting hmm. so from the journey setting what you can do you can copy the journey create a new another journey okay so i think uh, i have asked you people to compile a set of questions i know bablu has sent me and the first question i think i remember uh, vividly is can we use two different data extensions inside the journey right so the simple answer is no you can't add you can only have one single entry source and uh, you can't add two different data extensions but if you want there are a lot of options you can do either through a query you can merge those two different data extensions into uh, another data extension say the target data extension and add it to a journey right or either you can copy one version of the journey and make it like uh, journey 1 on another journey 2 okay and for the journey 1 have a data extension 1 and for journey 2 have a data extension 2 so this is where in the journey setting you can copy a full replica of a journey and then start hmm. you can delete a journey okay now rather than going with the ppt maybe uh, directly going into the journey will help okay so here is the journey setting so here what i said right i can delete this version i can delete this journey i can copy this journey okay and i can say session 2 and save it hmm let's try okay anyway let's try to save it so when i'm saving this okay i can directly go to session 2 okay and when i save it, it see also you very interesting you can organize okay and then you can uh, save where you want like you can have a folder structure let's say again i'll show you then i say organize i can have a folder where i want to say if i say so see then i can save it this to so see okay so this is how like now this entry source was pointing to data extension 1 i can update to data extension 2 hmm. now going to the journey setting if i go to the journey setting the first important thing is the contact entry i think yeah uh, i had captured this contact entry also here hmm. oh okay yeah correct ha huh. so the first important thing for the contact entry is okay uh how you have to define your contact entry whether you select no entry it means if lakshmi has entered this journey if she enters a journey okay uh, no matter what she is not going to enter this journey again hmm. and Uh, the most important thing about this no entry is even if you create a new version okay so what happens is uh, let's say if i if i activate this okay and then i can have another version uh, from here right so here if once i activate then only i'll get an option to have an another version of the journey hmm. so then what happens is if you uh, have made this journey settings as no entry uh you will not have an option okay of uh, so i'll say like this i'll give you an example this way so i activate this journey and uh, the journey started okay and suddenly uh, somebody said no 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 the person can enter or say the person can enter after exit like you have one or two options so the use case if it changes hmm, if you create a new version uh, you don't get the ability to modify this to reentry or entry after exit okay so that is one of the issue that happens if you select no entry hmm. so whenever you are setting up a journey be better discuss with your business analyst or the customer anyone uh, to define whether this is a strict provision otherwise you have you don't you don't have the ability to create a new version but you have to create a new total new set of a journey 
okay uh, that is one restriction that happens in journey builder so be very careful about no entry hmm.